everyone this is Greg hope you're well uh, me quite tired now so but uh, I've prepared things for you uh, be tired why because I had four shows in two months uh, four shows devoted to three devoted to whiskey and other spirits and one only to gin uh, if you follow my Instagram and my YouTube please my YouTube community page as well because channels not all mind you but uh, whiskey and other spirits channels do videos and live shows for some but they also do not everyone but more and more do also post written with image uh, images or not um, posts on their community page so please check it out and for that you have also to uh, be notified uh, because when I cannot do videos uh, now I do sh uh, reports of the shows on Instagram or on my community page pages uh, right so I'm gonna do a little disclaimer and also uh, explains the pro and cons of this big show which is the biggest in France devoted to whiskey and other spirits of course it's whiskey life Paris 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 in French uh, and as usual I'm spending time like others uh, to uh, re-watch the video and while I do no editing which complex complicates things a lot for me especially for this kind of uh, video but I found tricks as much as I can hope you like them at a certain extent um, and uh, then I will tell you about the tastings I made so not a hundred but not far which is a lot uh, too much most probably I agree for uh, several two days only of tasting it's too much I do not recommend people to do the same uh, I did an entire video about no video not yet but uh, oh yeah I speak a bit about it alcohol consumption uh, and also I have pages on my website about that but it's not the topic today um, what I will advise you if you're not interested in how uh, this show is looking like what you can taste the overall things the, uh, you have to come here or not come here is it worth for someone not from France or even from France uh, to visit the show if you're not interested by that you can skip it to go directly to tastings I will divide the video in uh, themes countries or uh, distilleries uh, when there is only one per country it happens uh, so you know if you don't want to lose time uh, you can do that otherwise thanks for watching the entire video you're not that numerous and I would like to thank you again for that right enough rambling as they say uh, disclaimer before I do the pro and cons this is not a full report ex uh, exhaustive comprehensive uh, report about the show uh, I did choices you have to make choices this is such a big show and I will tell you how much it is that you cannot taste everything I mean there's 1500 spirits there and only for whiskey I uh, calculate there are 130 whiskey brands and when I say brands doesn't mean there's only one bottle on each stand so multiply uh, 130 by probably two three four to ten or more sometimes bottles on on the stand so it's insane you cannot do it you will necessarily be frustrated as I was uh, so I missed a lot of Scottish distilleries like last year uh, where is where is it it's here yeah it's an upper law but because I needed a box it's not advertising uh, oh by the way these are and I haven't tasted them I'm sorry uh, oh except the one in the middle the exclusive uh, awarded uh, uh, world with drinks awards not all but uh, bottlings for there's one rum and two whiskies for this year's uh, so it's whiskey life Paris bottlings 
but there you have it all these and the Scottish ones were there close to the exit and the entry is there so as you can understand already I couldn't make a lot of uh, Scottish uh, distillery uh, visit a lot of them had a lot of stuff uh, probably the more I ever had <laughs> around me so it's gonna be hard so apologies for those guys of elements of Isla I really wanted to do those three and I couldn't so I told Chris which I met while living sorry my friend see you next time it's the same also I'm sorry for the rebranded completely rebranded core range of Port Askek belonging to the same owner Elixir, Dist Elixir Distillers recently taken over by Piano Ricard mind you so yeah I just wanted to do this introduction to say apologies sorry uh, even for the audience because compass box uh, there were two releases three four uh, I mean two already uh, the A and B uh, whiskies uh, which are sold as a pack to blend them home uh, it was an interesting proposal on the paper but again someone communicated the prices and then we have it on the catalog i won't show you because uh, it's too big uh, and <sighs> come on i mean the prices this year not of about all uh, but the prices of some whiskies 180 for the uh those compass box whiskies so i mean in a way i'm not happy not having tried them but anyway uh, i mean will i buy them probably not okay so that said there's still 93 whiskies i'm going to talk about not all in details of course it will be too long uh, so there were uh, 130 uh, approx uh, um, whiskey brands 38 sorry rum 13 cognac, 7 armagnac, 25 gins and other stuff as well and there was also cocktail street I mean no <laughs> not for me I, I, I never went there um, now the thing this year and you might if you like French whiskey you're gonna be happy with this video if you don't like them or don't bother you're not gonna be happy I won't apologize for that it's my year's choice there has been 22 stands this year featuring French whiskies where when I started my whiskey journey or let's say my first whiskey life Paris I'm not sure there was even more than one or two and a few years later there were only seven I think in 2012 they said or there were only seven stands but now we have 130 distilleries right in France and 83 with the finished product on the market so I will come back to that right enough generalities maybe so the pros the pros you might have understood a unique occasion in the year to try uh, 130 whiskey brands for I know it's expensive at 66 to 70 euros a day with uh, the access to the the main uh, which I said, the main lane which is this so again it's printed so small I cannot read everything even on site uh, when I was there with this even on my phone it's too complicated uh, yeah I'm already in the cons sorry <laughs> but yeah you get the occasion to try whiskies from Scotland um, to try whiskies from France, from Ireland, uh, r r yeah, Roman, uh, Rum Romani, Romani first time, uh, alas, I couldn't. England, again, I couldn't, I'm sorry. Uh, Wales, there's also Israel had milk and honey, not the first time, mind you. Stoning from Denmark, stoning, I won't speak about stoning because. Uh, on one of the shows I went, I tried a complete range and it was the same uh, that were present at Whiskey Life Paris. Uh, I talked about them, I loved everything I tried. I talked about them on my, I think on my community page and a bit on Instagram. Um, Germany, 
I'm speaking more about this in the video. USA, I'm sorry I missed a lot. I tried only one stand. I went to one stand only on the other. On another one, they told me there was only one special release uh, for this year and might be expensive. So I said, okay, I'll come back later. Uh, Asia, I went only to one or two. Well, let's see. If you extend Asia to everything uh, west south on, on the globe, yes, I went to two distilleries. Uh, what do I wanted to say? Japan. You know, I love Japanese whiskies. I made at least three videos or more about Japanese whiskies. So there's no doubt about that. I have uh, over 30, 38, I don't remember now. Japanese whiskies in my collection, uh, some average, some stunning, uh, some exceptional ones that I couldn't buy uh, again. Honestly, this year it was so overwhelming and uh, just to visit uh, the first part of the, of, of the show, when I saw there was a kind of um, cued uh, entry with uh, you know the barriers, the thing like in the museum to to go into the House of Suntory stand with all the brands, I said, "Come on, where are we? We're not in the museum. We have to do the queue to get to the stand. I know some stands are very busy, but this is even worse or better, probably. But uh, I mean." I don't know and I'm again on the con so I might be sorry uh, a bit on the two but yeah on the positive side you can try a lot of stuff so uh, if you don't have the occasion to go to many master classes tastings at retailers etc uh, and you can't go to whiskey fair Lindbergh or whiskey show London or stuff like that is it it is worth if you have a bit of money to come to Paris and do this show. If you are comfortable with money, you can do the VIP section, which is other brands, mostly independent butlers. Uh, mm, independent butlers, high-end ones, and some who will show there the higher uh, ranges. Uh, it will cost you around 120 euros for a day of that, uh, but you will approach a lot of good things. You will meet a lot of uh, whiskey makers. It's another pro for the show. Now the cons already talked about a bit. The venue was made in a big lane like that, and for me it should have been rather la like a plus or an X in order not to walk too much and as I, s I have issues you know weight and stuff so it was a pain in uh, what where you'd go no uh, to visit the show especially because some stands uh, no it's not easy to see there but some stands were on on the on the way you walk some others were kind of hidden in in the sides and as I couldn't read the numbers here it was a bit messy. Sometimes I walked two, three times the same way to find the stand. I lost a lot of time. Anyway, I also lost some time on second day, but for a better reason. I cannot tell you now, but maybe uh, will be interesting in the future. It's more personal. Um, right, okay. I think I, I spoke enough about this. Um, what do I wanted to say else? Yeah, 15, all this, uh, in the La Villette, the big, big construction there. All this is in, uh, was in 15, uh, and also, okay, uh, the other spaces. In 15, um, these are the special VIP stands. I don't know if you, if it focuses, see in these was something very rare uh, <coughs> and also rare to find so you see uh, 15,000 square meters is a lot to walk right okay now the what I'm gonna do there is uh, I did a, a trick with picture so 
I'm gonna pause to uh, to change the picture and also show you a bit of bottles related to the to the brands and uh, hopefully it makes sense for you and uh, yeah hope you will like it stay tuned right so you might have understood uh, first uh, whiskey I went to so I have to go a lot uh, walk 200 meters or so uh, maybe less uh, to find their stand because I absolutely wanted to have my palate clean and fresh to try this um, highly expected expected and also rather well rated by some reviewers um, Isle of Harris first single malt release and the first eight batches uh, of course, we didn't have the eight batches on the stand. They they have the one I tried, which is the number five, or to be more precise, where is the? Um, can I have a, a quick look at the uh, at the uh, yeah the okay so batch number H A zero 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 five. 23 uh, so it's a batch run of 1230 26 uh, bottles 46% they are um, bottled between uh, July uh, 23 and August 23 uh, the cask is uh, ex bourbon from Heaven Hill and Buffalo Trace and Oloroso and Fino Sherry Note that our Loroso is only 11% of this batch uh, and Fino only 4%. Then there's a marrying uh, time of 19 weeks and 4 days. Uh, mix of short and long fermentation, etc. etc. Regarding this release, I'm gonna go back to it quick because as my birthday is approaching, I had after this tasting at the live show i had i won't open it now i apologize uh, but i had to get me this so this is going to be opened around my birthday and uh i will give you my first impressions and i will uh when it's around 12 uh, 11 days uh, november 10 uh, and i will give you my first impressions and of course i will review re-review it later on so there you have it as beautiful as the gin bottle and let me tell you the content is also as beautiful as the gin in my opinion i was very impressed uh, the nose is to die for it's exceptional the palette's a little less uh, spectacular if i may say it's super subtle floral fruity maritime uh, maybe less maritime than the gin. There's no sugar, sugar kelp added there, right? Even if everything is made on site, as I understand, uh, there's less maritime influence, but you can still feel some elements. Uh, I found it super balanced. I find it super delicate. Um, considering comparing it to the only thing I guess for me is relevant is uh, an odd American bottle the ad spoiler <laughs> so i think i'm gonna do that uh it's a beautiful whiskey uh honestly uh, i was impressed i had to get me one a bit pricey 85 euros in france uh but it's the first release the box i'm not gonna show you today it's a bit fragile it's a bit uh, complicated uh spoiler as well i did ask them uh, i had a very nice very cool uh brand ambassador there elid and also there was uh the head distiller who was there it was very interesting uh i told them uh based on the videos i've seen from whiskey lock whiskey jason and uh, maybe others not sure uh, that uh, apparently the box and i experimented in myself it was a bit difficult to uh, open and to not to lose the the coaster make it fall etc so i told them do you would you consider after this inaugural release that had to be a bit special to 
change the box, make it more solid and uh, closing for all from all sides. They said, yes, we're considering it because we had this feedback. But when I asked them, will you change this to put natural color, etc., on, on the front or even on the... Uh, because it's not even written there, only the importer, La Maison Whisky. They say, we're not going to change the lay the... Uh, the shape of the bottle and probably not the label as well okay but anyway great experience great expectations fulfilled at least for the first impressions so stay tuned for later on uh, in this month uh, no next month <laughs> uh, as we're ending the month uh, for my first impressions about it thank you i will pause it and come back with second whiskey tasted right second stand and i'm sorry no i'm not sorry there's gonna be a long french whiskey series kind of uh pre preceding a big video in english and another one in french devoted only to french whiskies but yeah i had to try the novelties of several french stands and i i, I took the time there First of them, my uh, favorite current new distillery uh, world and French, one of the two, let's say, with uh, Spirit of Yorkshire, probably the two most exciting ones I tried those last years. That said, I discovered at least two other uh, very interesting ones here at the show. Uh, unfortunately, my camera doesn't seem to focus. I spent a lot of time to prepare this and give you a lot of infos and unfortunately it doesn't focus. Uh, I'm sorry again, I don't do editing. Uh, I can't explain to you why and how, but I get, I get a kind of fright and uh, freezing thing when I see the timing. Uh, when you do uh, editing so I, I cannot and it's too small and I, I cannot do it I'm sorry yes maybe someday with a long training but for now you're gonna deal with it or not watch my videos so uh, TOS distillery TOS for the other side uh, Artesia is the name of the single malt I have a big nice map uh, there that, that's hidden, but it's uh, too glossy, it's too complicated, too big to show you there. So I had to rely on the French Federation of Spirits and tell you it's the one that is, if I don't mistake, it's there. It's quite north of France, it's the uh, yellow dot. Uh, they also now own another distillery, which is uh, Vembrechy which is even northern. Uh, what, can I, what else can I say? Yeah, about French whiskies, there's a big, big uh, novelty that's out now. It's, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to grab it without spilling the glass. I'm gonna show which ha what I have in my glass. Mathieu Accard ri wrote this book about French whiskey, a uh, brief and intense history of French whiskey. Uh, it's a big book, uh, it's not cheap, but it's one of the most interesting, especially because of these pages, which shows uh, the different kinds of uh, alambic steels, AK steels. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, where is it? I saw it. Uh, the Varangem ones were crazy, mainly doing juniper, uh, but uh, also doing whiskey. Uh, what else can I show you quickly? Yeah, this is another distillery. I'm going to talk about it soon because I, I have some bottles now from Distillery Bertrand from the east of France. Um, I've asked Mathieu, who kindly interviewed me uh, about my creation, Northman QV1110, uh, in his blog, whiskeyfrancais.com, if he's going to do this in English. And he said, I would love to, but he's looking for a publisher uh, in England or in the, to make it bilingual. There was this on the, on the, uh, on the book 
40 years of history, it says. Uh, French whiskey distilling, I mean, officially, seriously, started before that, but officially in, a, in 1983. First whiskey released in uh, 1987. It was a blend, Whiskey Breton, from Varangem Distillery, making Armory. I will explain you all that later on, on the, those French videos. We are here to speak about Artesia. Artesia single malt also is quite singular. Uh, they are using a, um, a, a Holstein type still, which is only uh, used once for most of the whiskey. So one distillation, but they have a long fermentation and they they are really working with the, uh, they're also, they were brewers initially, working well with the uh, uh, the barley etc can't be too long on on this uh, but I will come back to them uh, in fact I will interview them in French uh, next week and uh, even if you don't understand all French if you have a few questions in English I think we're gonna try to answer uh, anyway if you uh, um, sub to the channel you will receive a notification about this uh, I have three expressions from them. I really love what they do. Uh, the most uh, maybe well known is the one uh, that was commissioned by La Maison du Whisky. It's the Funoir Char 3, which mean could translate uh, half of it in, in English anyway. Uh, Fu is cask, noir is black. So Fu Noir Black Cask Char number three. So heavily, not the heaviest, but heavily charred. Uh, French oak, uh, malted barley, 46%. Uh, uh, very nice one. I reviewed it already, so maybe I put a link. Uh, another novelty was uh, the new limited port, uh, revamped one, a, a red port, single malt as well. 45% uh, ABV. Um, it's not written on the, again, you see it's not only Harris. It's not written that it's non chill filtered and uncolored, but as I uh, did uh, talk a lot with them, uh, they say that. What do I have in my glass? It's not this one. It, so, see, no color in there. It's not this one, it's another novelty which was uh, announced before for those who follow the distillery. So I jumped and uh, bought a bottle immediately. Even if I never tried them, I had high expectation. And they are fulfilled. It's X White Port cask, single cask at 55% ABV. Uh, contrarily to what La Maison de Whiskey says, it's 300. Well, let me check. I don't want to spill that glass. 331 bottles only. I bought the 8 one. So you see. I think La Maison Whiskey says they have 200. It's because they have probably their 200. And probably the... Uh, the I will find out. The distillery has the, the rest uh, at the on site. Or we'll see later on. Anyway, uh, there was also a red port one, which was nice. But my favorite was this port, white port, and uh, also the limited edition sherry released last year, which was very good, six months in order or so. Distillery does a very flavorful uh, distillate, very clean, very pure. They are master, uh, Cathy, the uh, distiller, is really a master. Uh, master distiller and also she's part of the blending team she do does a fantastic work yeah this is super fragrant this is in territory of pastry of uh, candied fruit of um, even waxed fruit if it does exist beautiful nose very fruity it's rich port santé as we say in French cheers Mm. Mm. Wow, there's something special in that one. You can feel the um, the esters very high, and you get those a lot of jelly, jelly fruit, jammy fruit, quince, 
apricot, um, maybe some peaches, uh, also all sorts of uh, apples, yellow, uh, green and, and red for me. Um, I really love it. Let me sh shut down the uh, internet because I'm afraid it's going to make me lose <sighs> lower the connection. Okay, hope it's it's uh, it's good now. Yeah, beautiful whiskey. I'm gonna open it up just a bit. I'm gonna re full review. I mean, another time, but soon. Uh, by the way, there's another expression that's not highlighted. It was not there. Again, it's only available at the distillery. It's the core range. Uh, it says pure malt, but it's single malt. Uh, it's a French bad habit as Japanese one as well, but here it means it's only one distillery. So it's confusing. This is beautiful, really beautiful. Um, Mm. Really gourmet, yet powerful. Some would prefer with a few drops. It's a whiskey for connoisseur. Well, this one is more approachable for everyone. And this should make the consensus. Okay, just my opinion. I'm gonna move on to another distillery. Stay tuned. Okay, so now we're still in France. We're still in France, but we're moving uh, southeast on the Alps, close to the Alps. We're now uh, reverse. Okay, we're now here. Yellow dot distillery du Vercors. Um, let me check. Yeah, I forgot to tell you because I did some search, and, and uh, I mean, uh, this is to prepare. Um, so Artesia was found in 2017, first whiskey in 2020, I forgot to say Isle of Harris 2015, first whiskey in 2023. Uh, uh, so this one is the Distillerie du Vercors, which, is, uh, found, which was found in 2012, uh, first distilling in 2016, first whiskey 2020. Uh, this one is uh, very specific and very um, probably the first in the world they say I don't know if it's true or uh, also Matthew says it in the book probably the first distillery um, in the world to use uh, low temperature distillation as they say I'm not sure I understand everything it's for the wash still and then they go for more classic in the pot still the second distillation but what comes and they are organic uh i forgot to say the non-chill filter non-colored i'm gonna buy one so because it's one of my highlights of the year uh it was not available yet when i went to the shop uh for s people who follow the french scene when whiskey live paris happens mind you uh some of the novelties are already on sale even on the on the show on a special shop but others are being released the following weeks and sometimes months. So yeah, so the, the uh, one on the left on the orange is Signature, X bourbon X cognac cask. The one you cannot see, I'm sorry, in the middle is the 1023 to celebrate uh, the 10 years. What did I say? Uh, yeah, the 10 years of the distillery. Uh, it's matured in 90% bourbon and cognac cask and 10% in acacia wood, like the whiskey I uh, created. But uh, of course 10% only and no sauterne, so it's way less influence. 44% uh, ABV, all their bottles are unfortunately 50 CL, it's very craft, it's a tiny distillery. So you can see on the background blue label also the Tourbe Reserve. Uh, and I realize I forgot to tell you that for the Artesia, the picture was displaying something that was hidden uh, behind a counter, which was the new upcoming release barley and uh, malt mix and rye. Sorry, barley and rye uh, mix. Very interesting. 
Okay, so I really found this spirit super clean, super interesting, beautiful. I'm gonna speak more about that when I will buy a bottle and uh, give you my impressions. Okay, I'm gonna pause it again. Now, before we get to this whiskies, I forgot to mention uh, this distillery from Alsace reg region, Lemon. Uh, lemon in the east of France does whiskey since 2000 uh, and first whiskies in 2007 uh, but spirits uh, fruit eau de vie or eau de vie de fruit in French since 1850 uh, so when I will do my whiskey uh, French whiskey video, I will explain to you a bit for me the three or four families of whiskey makers and why they differ one from the others. But too long here, but basically, you're gonna get see some examples here. Uh, Lehman being one of uh, based on uh, fruit, eau de, eau de vie, uh, fruit spirit experience to also get into whiskey territory after that. I tried a lot of things from them. I'm not sure we're gonna have time, uh, probably buy a bottle soon. So I tried a blend which was very nice in a d more dumpy bottle. Unfortunately, my pictures of the show uh, were, were not good. So have to raise them so this that's why I showed you the bottle it's a generic one it's not a it's okay but it's ABV it's too low it's a bit too green for me it's decent but I preferred three other offers such one called premium which was bottled at 50 percent uh, and had eight years old sauterne in it beautiful one uh, I might come back to it again uh, I'm gonna purchase other French whiskies we're moving on now to cognac territory. Why cognac? Because the new wave of French whiskey producers, not all of course, are uh, cognac producers which decided at a certain time to move to... Uh, there's so many there, I'm going to look at just my this... Uh, yeah, the red dot, it's uh, French cognac region, a lot five, six, seven, uh, probably ten distilleries, new distilleries there are uh, doing whiskey or prepare, and even more preparing to do other whiskies. Fontaga has an opaque, completely opaque bottle, very difficult to show, uh, even in true, you can see there's some texture in it. It's one of the rare opaque bottles I found interesting shape-wise and design-wise. Uh, not everyone likes it. It's also a glass stopper, so which is interesting. Uh, they, of course, base their whiskies on cognac maturation and their cognac experience. Uh, but uh, so a lot of care in blending and maturing and, and, and experience in distilling. What I found interesting there is they don't do finishes, but full maturation. So as I uh, tried five expressions, you can see only four there. Uh, Pinot de Charente cask was very well made. Usually Pinot over, over, uh, overwhelms and uh, I mean takes over on the distillate. Here it's not the case, so kudos to them. Uh, I also enjoy the Sauterne cask and I enjoy the two wine casks which were perfectly tame, which uh, speaks volumes about what they can do so a lot of potential they only uh, released i think maybe let me check they exist since 8070 uh whiskey distilled first time eight, uh, 20, uh, 18 and 21 first release so they're quite young for whiskey but i found them very interesting i might talk about you about them uh, later on uh, because I, I, I think I'm gonna get some and I'm very interested in learning how it's made so there was a the stem is they use codes so you can see there the stem is saint Emilion red one cask while the DMGR it's in fact Poyac wine a beautiful border wine and cognac cask you can see the ABVs which are sometimes changing right uh, let's go before I forget I have to speak to you about distillery I already covered where is it yeah 
in uh, for the Salon du Gachot or France Quintessence. Um, so this is uh, Tessandier, another cognac or liqueur distillery. Cognac or liqueur? No one a mistake. <sighs> and I will have a doubt. Okay, anyway, I will come back to it because again, I think I'm going to buy uh, one or two. And yeah, Arlette, it's the name of the... Uh, the founder, I think. Uh, they just dropped the last E. Yeah, cognac. So this is how the range looks like. Uh, and um, the original, which is the um, regular releases like this, I, I find very clean spirits, very, very nice. Uh, New Oak and Bourbon are, are the cask, how it's made. One that blew me away because uh, one of the best whiskey I think showcasing a uh, very special finish but still mm, remaining with the distri character it was the Minu Mizunara finish uh, what was amazing is 48% ABV and the price is around 52 55 euros super decent price so kudos to them for that okay let's move on to the next one for this one we're gonna get a bit in history because it's Armorique, it's Varangem, it's the first distillery that ever did whiskey and released whiskey in French in France. Uh, the current release the current look I mean of the core range is not this, this is a special release for uh, the, the Whiskey Life Paris. I saw it, yeah. So this is how the new range looks like. So Armoric, this is a 10 years. I tried the 15 years that was very good, even better than last year in my opinion. Uh, so the, f the, the 15 years is a mix, uh, it's a blue label. I recommend the blue label over the green label 15. Bourbon casks for 10 years and then American and Spanish oak sherry casks 46%. This one is a single cask, single cask sherry cask, uh, 14 years old, distilled in 2008, uh, number 3339, 58% ABV. This is very nice, special for La Maison du Whisky. This year they released their older, oldest whisky, which is uh, 21 years old, uh, for charity, a two liters bottle, insane thing, a decanter. Uh, for a charity um, auction and uh, just to clarify something people uh, overlook often French whiskey and say why do you say it's 40 years of uh, uh, French whiskey as there's no 40 years release well it's simple they didn't kept enough uh, stock of cask for that they were experimenting they had to do cash not everyone was buying French whiskey at the beginning, so they didn't keep enough casks at the beginning, all of them. And mm -hmm. it's only, uh, I mean, I doubt there is somewhere uh, older than 25 years old whiskey in the cellars. They can be, there will be one or two casks. Last, last year, Edu, 21 years old, it was only uh, one cask. Uh, maybe there were others that was not good, but they released only one cask, so uh, you have to understand things. Message done. So we, they have al also another release called Maître de Chez, mixing a lot of casks, but this was my favorite, along with the 15. Uh, what else? Okay, uh, I'll be back. And here for the previous one, and partly for this one, we're here. Uh, where is it? always tough to think in reverse. On the top there, Varangem in Brittany. <sighs> have to find another disposal. Why I'm showing you this? This is uh, an interest in interesting that there is this bottle behind it, uh, or another version, but uh, because this one mixes an armorique, this is an indie bottling uh, from Benjamin Quince, 
mixing uh, an armoric and an edu. So uh, armoric is from Varangem distillery, edu is from a distillery de Menhir. Uh, two Brittany distilleries. So this guy is uh, doing only French whiskies, uh, independent bottling uh, with finishes, and he took a cask from uh, those two distilleries, blended it, and finished it in a French wine cask. Um, do I have the details? Uh, I'm not sure. No, uh, it's a re it's a release that not out already so i would i wanted to buy it i couldn't november uh so in a few weeks it will be out a beautiful whiskey very well made uh one uh probably the best thing they did release didn't try the last things but uh so yeah congrats uh to benjamin for this one uh which makes me the transition to go to uh distillery de menhir stay tuned right so this is a bit complicated so this is la distillerie de menhir oh not this this <laughs> which i recommend the brosseliande for the record distillerie de menhir is using pure blé noir which is 100 uh, percent buckwheat so uh, one of the most terroir in fact because uh, this one also uses partly uh Brittany oak from the Brocellion forest famous from king arthur legends and stuff um, so they had a beautiful uh, 15 years old single cask but uh, they have also this limited 10 years old release beautiful it's a tribute to uh jean le cam though the joke here yes we can uh jean le cam navigator or seafarer who saved during one of these uh, latest uh, um, race uh, another navigator save his life so uh if they partner with the uh, distillery to do this very special version very gourmet did i wrote the uh, if there was something special in the casks uh, i'm not sure uh, what did they say no uh, no they didn't say so i guess it's french oak should have worked more uh, on this. <laughs> uh, my, bear in mind, I have less than a week to, to work this report, so apologies, I, I don't know more about this one, but it was delicious. Right. And this is also in Brittany. Be back. Okay, we're staying in France, sorry or not sorry, <laughs> uh, with uh, and staying in Brittany with this distillery, which is called Distillerie de la Mine d'Or, a distillery of the gold mine, which is do, uh, which started uh, in um, 2016, so a young distillery, uh, 2017 first whiskey and 2022. Um, no, uh, first distillation and 2022 first whiskies. So I tested four different uh, expressions. You can pause if you want to know exactly them, those, but I'm going to tell you quickly. Uh, so Galad is the name of the single malt. Uh, my favorite was A la Table des Chefs, which was a uh, um, a collaboration between uh, chef, uh, different chefs and uh, the distillery for a long time they uh, tried to do the best recipe at their uh, opinion and experience so they used French oak, ex-bourbon and ex-cognac cask and bottled it at 47.1 beautiful whiskey, very, very gourmet, very um, uh, a lot of character I also liked where is the leaflet? Uh, the yeah, the origin. There is also an ex rum cask, um, prelude, and uh, you can see also the uh, distillery there. So yeah, they do also gin and other things. Uh, so very interesting, nice, uh, subtle distillate. I will probably speak more about this in the future. Uh, three years old uh, or three and a half, so quite nice. Uh, we're gonna finish now uh, the French 
I know some uh, had enough. <laughs> uh, we're gonna finish the French section with two more. Bear with me and then we'll go to other countries. I promise. Okay, so now we're back in France and back in the uh, in the Alps, where well, we never left France. Back in the Alps with the most probably, and I'm going to show another picture, this from the distillery, and showcasing the Alps mountain on the on the on the bottom. Uh, the glass is shaped with that. The cork is recycled uh, as well from the. Um, the, um, I don't know, I don't remember the name of the residue uh, from the <sighs> from the distilleries. Okay, uh, La Dreche in French. Anyway, so it's the completely revamped Domaine des Hauts de Glace, aka DHG uh, distillery farm uh, and distillery super uh, craft approach. Uh, there are. Um, Distilling since 2000, oh, uh, 1986, sorry, uh, 1999 for whiskey, and they do uh, barley, but they also do rye. It's the, probably the first French whiskey making rye, uh, by the way, uh, and the first release in 2002. They had uh, previously dumpy bottles with exact sha same shape as this, mind you. And maybe you can see it better uh, there, because uh, now all the infos are all infos. Well, some of the infos are on the side instead of being on the front, right? So for this distillery, I, I said it will be my highlight. Uh, highlights. Uh, it is still for me a distillery with I which I struggled to uh, struggle to really enjoy what they do. But uh, since I tried the Clim Moisson Climat Les Gaber, Les Gaber is a farm, uh, is, a, is, a, is a parcel of... Uh, so s I, I connected more with them. They had three releases. Uh, my favorite there was Indigen, the new one, two Episteme, the new with the same batch number, it's a bit confusing. The only difference is yellow on the side, yellow dot uh, or yellow square. Uh, it was the one I preferred with 100% uh, malted rye. Uh, four years old, X cognac and X uh, small cask um, uh, using their own uh, refill um, from their own previous casks, 112 litres casks. Uh, okay, so interesting to follow because they, w they work a lot to, to change things and maybe make it more approachable. Otherwise it's quite herbal, quite dry. Uh, herb, it's not for, for everyone, but I, I found it its quality for sure. Stay tuned. Now we're going to st last mystery from France in this report. <laughs> We're going now to the Loire region, where Léonard de Vinci stayed at Amboise for some time, where all these castles, medieval Renaissance castles. We're going to one of the most amazing, interesting new French distillery, raising the bar quite high, like uh, Distillery du Vercors Sequoia, um, and uh, of course Artesia. This is super craft, uh, as craft as they can do. This is direct fire stills. This is their own um, barley. Um, oh, I now I forgot the word. Malting floor. <laughs> this is also searching for everything yeast, barley. Uh, uh, the more high end they can do, I will go back to it because, because. When I went to La Maison Whiskey to buy this, I said, I'm so impressed, I want to buy this, or uh, the one of the three I tried. They didn't have it at that time, but they had something else, which leads back to this, because the writer of this is also uh, working for La Maison du Whiskey, and La Maison du Whiskey 
he developed a range which is called Version Française. Uh, and Version Française is very interesting. They, they're not an indie bottler. I said that a bit quick at Jean-Marc, the, the, the director of La Maison du Whisky uh, shop in um, Anjou. There are two shops in Paris and even more, but uh, the main shops. And uh, the Anjou, Rue d'Anjou is more about whisky. Odeon is more about other spirits. He said, no, not really an indie bottler, Greg, but you know, they're working only with French distilleries. So to make things more clear, I think it's a kind of indie bottling because it's not the official release sold by the distillery, but it's kind of store peak range with the product chief coming to uh, the distillery and Mathieu, of course, uh, Probably I will have to have him alive to explain that more to me, but uh, he's doing a selection of job like he was uh, another blender working. And on the shop there was this bottle and I said, Jean-Marc, what is this? It is one which is, uh, I think it was uh, French oak cognac casks but it's finished in the porter beer casks from the porter brewery i said oh my what is this i don't know this uh brewery i'm not sure he said it's like a stout but not exactly stout beer and i said i don't know and uh it was the same price by the way as the other as the uh, harris and he said i'll see if i can make you try and he had a sample and i tried to say whoa that is beautiful Again, I'm not trying this on the Harris because, as usual, I have to do pictures uncorked and opened uh, of the bottles for my archives and for the videos. But yeah, so this is La Piotre. It's the name of a part of the boat. Uh, bear in mind, a lot of French distilleries have crazy weird names uh, uh, linked to personal stories or to uh, local stories. So uh, it's very special. On the back you can see it's uh, four years old and it's uh, non pitted and uh, also it doesn't say but it's I know it's unchill filtered and uncolored. Beautiful whiskey, very uh, gourmet, I will come back to it when I will open. They have also uh, when it's called Porsamo which is pitted with Irish peat, uh, very uh, original. Uh, French oak and then Irish peat, uh, peated malt. Bottles usually for the core range are 50 CL. This, sorry, this one is 70, so it was also interesting. Uh, you can find them around 50, 60, I don't remember now. Uh, do I have the prices of La Piotre? La Piotre, uh, yeah, 50, 52, it's reasonable given the high, high standards of the distillery. Uh, would you find this easily? Not sure. Uh, that said, now the Whiskey Exchange has around 40 different French whiskies. Um, for those who live in UK, you have almost, if I may say, no excuse. Uh, to discover more French whiskies with all these uh, 40 references not all worth but at least 30 of them I would say and uh, 18 different distilleries more than I have in my collection I have 14 different distilleries my aim is to have 20 different distilleries uh, in a few months uh, to make the video I promised you about French whiskey but beautiful very clean very gourmet very uh, Tasty, malty, biscuity, uh, distillate, very interesting. So, uh, one to watch. Stay tuned. Right, we are leaving France. Some will be happy, <laughs> maybe. Uh, and we're staying in Europe uh, before going mm, a bit far. Uh, so, world whiskies. Uh, we will get to some Scottish at the end, but honestly, I didn't have time to try a lot.
it's life next year i promise i will try to do less french and more uh promise promise i will try and more scottish whiskies anyway it's not scottish even if graham cole is there and his wife a uh, wonderful couple uh helping to run dingle distillery from uh, west ireland uh i'm not gonna go to history of uh about 2016 founded 2017 first uh distilling of whiskey uh oh yeah first whiskey 20 oh no 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 i'm mistaking it's not the good line sorry where is dingle there um in my list i don't see it oh yeah yeah sorry 2012 uh first is uh founded and first whiskey 2016 that's it <laughs> sorry <laughs> i tried one two three four uh five with something extra not ready as whiskey but so too many things to mention given the time we have uh, I know it's long, but again, uh, I will put timestamps. Um, so the picture there is of the Lunasa, uh, the latest of the Wheel of the Year series, showcasing uh, very old time pagan times uh, traditions. The Lunasa is the first field bourbon cask matured for four years whiskey and finished in uh, widow gin. Uh, bourbon barrels and it's still triple distilled as all the others you're gonna see there uh, 50.5 ABV very gourmet very nice I like that one my other favorite was the uh, so this is second release second release no I'm not sure uh, about that sorry uh, I did a lot of copy and paste so it was a bit complicated I might have mistake um let's forget the number is of the wheel of the series not very important so the next one is impossible to pronounce for me so i will say la lebride something like that apologies can't r read it there uh so nice first field bourbon cask and a uh, rye finish I, I liked it i also liked last year's samain samain with a, f a muscatel cask finish and I liked a bit less the uh, another release with um, Shiraz cask finish, but it was still nice. Uh, but anyway, Dingle is a uh, um, distillery to count with, and I was happy to see again Chris, aka Coldorak, helping out there. Uh, we did have a nice uh, exchange. Let's go after a pause to another part of continental Europe this time. Right, we're in Germany and Germany has a lot of new distilleries now, but I have also some established ones. And in the Bavaria region, this one is uh, Sliers. Uh, and it's one of the, let's say the most established, recognized maybe. Sorry, um, along with, um, oh man, my memory. St. Killian's. Uh, so I tried for the first time a new reference. Excuse me. A one hour talk, mind you. This is Bavarian peat for the first time. It's amazing with a new kind of bottle. Uh, and, and this is very nice, reminding me a bit of the Connemara uh, cast strength pitted uh, Kool-Aid whiskey, so kind of a bit of grassy as well, but very interesting, um, very fresh, 43% uh, ABV, I, I liked it, um, and also there was a new, uh, with almost the same look, except it's all black in there, uh, entry level uh, blended malt, uh, made with another German distillery called uh, just malt or paint. Uh, which I found uh, very fresh, a bit green, but on in the good way, uh, quite nice. But the what uh, my it's an official uh, picture. I um, oh, I had issues with my picture uh, at that stand, especially the one with the whiskey that was most spectacular. Uh, that I had no picture of it. 
but I think I'm gonna buy it. It was the Stellier's Amontillado cask finish. Very impressive. It's in the finishes range, of which I have already four whiskies I reviewed, I think, on my website, but probably not a lot on video. This one is the Oloroso finish, uh, or cask. Uh, I don't remember its entire. Uh, very in so the s it's green instead of uh, gray, uh, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful, and for me the best Amontillado uh, finish whiskey I ever had. Believe me or not, just my opinion. Stay tuned. Moving on to India now, uh, with my apologies to Promod from Amrut, I, I couldn't do everything every stand so. I didn't go uh, see Amrit this time, but uh, I was so impressed by uh, the uh, gin, Jai Salmer gin. I'm going to talk about it, uh, you can be sure about that, because uh, they didn't have a bottle when I went to La Maison Whiskey, neither of this of the, or the gold edition. It's too soon for this, uh, it's one of the releases they showcase at the show, but they don't have the bottles yet at La Maison de Whisky, the distributor, so I have to wait. Um, but I was blown away in the, in the, in the, in the Gin Ciders show with their gin, especially uh, the black, but also the gold edition, which was stunning. Probably my in my top three gins I've ever tried, but uh, spoiler for my special top gins video coming on, hopefully before the end of the year. This one I'm showing here is not core range, it's cast strength uh, single cask if I'm not mistaken, or a small batch, not 100% sure now. Uh, so it's batch 3, I tried a batch 4 as well. Uh, no, batch 4, uh, this one my favorite, the IPA finish, bottled at 52.4, uh, while the other, Jugal Bundy, it's a special series, was a port cask finish um, at 54.8. I also tried the Asava, which is sorry, Cabernet Sauvignon finish. And from the core range, or almost uh, the double cask, which also I, I put in the wish list, bourbon cherry cask 45%, and the select with Indian barley. Uh, but this, this is amazing, super flavorful, and what I like about Rampur, that I guess a bit, I get a bit less, there still are some notes like that in, in some uh, Amrut, but I, where I get the most exotic, luscious, fruity, uh, rose and uh, sandalwood and stuff notes, it's in Rampur uh, single malt, so I, I gotta get me some of them. Uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful experience at that stand. Thank so much for the Master Blender uh, and other people there I, I had a, a talk with. One to follow for sure. This is very impressive. Did you? Now we're going to Australia, to a distillery which I have only a single cask for French, which is fantastic. Uh, 2020 release, I uh, already talked, but maybe not made a full review, I should. Uh, I went to the stand because last year, and maybe the previous one, I wasn't there. Uh, so I'm trying to make a kind of uh, alternate things to give everyone a chance, but uh, it's not human to do every stand. Starward, they were completely revamping the core range, uh, changing the packaging from uh, these that you can do maybe if you see the uh, well, the stout and the unexpected are closer to. Uh, I'm not even sure. I mean, you remember it. All the yeah, there was a star, and uh, it's a tall bottle, but. They're changing now to something that I find a bit too flashy, if not cheesy. I'm not a super, f I don't know what you think, but I'm not a super fan of this. Uh, but yeah, when it counts, it's what's inside, as they say. Uh, yeah, I forgot to speak to about um, 
Do I do it now? I forgot to speak about Roselier French brand. I will speak about it again in the uh, English and French video. I'm gonna buy uh, one or two because they, there's a lot of progress, especially in the um, parcellaire, as they say, range. But uh, stout cask I liked from Star Wars, uh, but my problem was the uh, started the maturation with a wine cask and the guy there told me they wanted to keep the trademark red wine wine cask uh, for almost every release which is a problem for me uh, just they do some things well but still get a bit of whiny notes I'm not super fan of uh, well I like their Apera uh, version uh, by the way they revamped the Fortis to now uh, they changed the name to 100 proof because they they had an issue a uh, juridical issue with a legal issue with the Fortis wine company so they couldn't keep the name uh, what else did I try yeah stout cast finishing imperial stout cast from Brickland brewery in Melvin uh, also the single barrel finished in Tony Barrick barrels I like that uh, 52.8 unfortunately with all the offer they had uh, probably 10 bottles on the stand I forgot I I saw it it's the one on the green the unexpected which is a pitied first pitied Star Wars for me I missed it so sorry maybe next year uh, or if I have other occasions uh, we'll see okay next last last world whiskey and then we will finish with some Scottish <sighs> honestly so long I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to upload it but we'll try Westland of course I had to get back to Westland with a lot of bottles on the uh, on the table again I didn't try everything but almost uh, my favorite is not there I, I did post it in Instagram I think it was um, a single cask uh, number 600 uh, well I can see it here 607 uh, seven years old cask strength uh, with Jurançon sweet French wine um, they had also an Amarone uh, and uh, of course I had to retry the, the, not the brand new but the last year's Garena 7th edition with local oak brandy and sherry cask as well the Colère edition 1 uh, with Alba barley and used oak beautiful as well and before I tried the uh, last one uh, they had something exceptional and rare from their uh, special let's say reserve for uh, people getting in the distillery so exclusive so it was one uh, in aged in the old thumper beer casks in the library tasting series cask exchange collaboration with cloudburst brewing you can see the details here and I finished with the pitted one the solemn uh, first edition uh, five and a half years old first release in ever in um, Pete from the Washington from Seattle, close to Seattle from an old military reserve where there are some pit bugs so how about that back to Scotland I had to if I would don't want to be <laughs> by the Scottish guy lag color is different here a bit clearer uh, my pictures might be a bit it's my picture it's a bit too dark but honestly it's be in between those two uh, quite impressive uh, new core range releases maybe a tad young for the Kilmory edition uh, the the clear one uh, the bourbon barrels one Th it's still three years old mind you I wonder if I didn't prefer the previous release <coughs> inaugural one sorry and uh, there was the Cory Crevy edition which is sherry cask finish for six months 55% ABV um, they give some details yeah about which body guide comes from Miguel Martin for the sherried one 
What can I say? Uh, I haven't seen uh, yet the video from um, um, Gert Whisky. Uh, oh man, Whisky Lover Society. Sorry, I'm getting <laughs> exhausted by all this. Uh, he, he said maybe he was too young, as I understand it. Both are a bit young, it can feel, but I found maybe the proposal. Let's see if I can find my notes. The lag proposal, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe more interesting than the bourbon one. I don't know, have to retry them in another context, but yeah, a distillery to follow anyway. So, pitied Aaron if I may say, because it's another distillery in the south. Staying in uh, Scotland, but going up north, very high north, in the Isle of Skye. There was Talisker, there is now, well, since I think it's last year, yeah, last uh, 2021. For, or if I'm not mistaken, um, distillery founded in 2016, Tora if I pronounce well, was having the regular Alt Glean um, 46, is it 46? I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, 46 release, but they also have two high strength whiskies. So they had the straight from the cask, the one blue on the um, uh, here, if I may say, blue grayish, which is the official uh, batch strength in the Legacy series. You can see details here. 61.1, but weirdly, 2000 bottles, I think it's a small batch, but guess what, the limited release for France, you can see on the right, America is uh, with a complex uh, recipe, is 2400 two bottles, weird, and with the same ABV, hmm. Five years old stated, 2018 um, vintage distillation, I found it maybe more interesting, more complex. So I consider maybe uh, 71 euros is quite decent for a high strength, even young distillery. I think it's it's a very correct price. So this one is on my wish list. Uh, what can I say? Well, last year's Toraveg, uh, I found it a bit too simple and too Carolilla-esque not very sky but i mean the imprint of in the minds of uh talisker fans is so big with a very specific style of as uh, isle of sky, uh, talisker it was it'll, it's be a, it's gonna be it is sorry very hard for other distilleries of the same islands if others are uh, built in the future to rival with it I think the only way they can rival with it is doing craft stuff, no coloring, blah, blah, blah. And probably that's what those are uh, doing now, guys from Torvex, one to follow, maybe it's still a bit young, but I found it more interesting, both expressions, maybe a notch more uh, for the French release. I don't know, we'll see if I can get a bottle, but to follow, stay tuned. Ben Romach, of course, of course, Ben Romach. <laughs> That's it. No, no. This is to make a, a long story short. The three releases I tried. Uh, no, I tried others, but uh, I preferred uh, organic vir virgin oak, pit smoke virgin oak. I hate virgin oak usually, but it works. And guess what? There is also some on the triple distill, and it works as well. So pretty happy with that. I also tried the famous air dried uh, and uh, what was the other one? Kiln dried oak and air dried oak. I found it quite nice. Uh, again, I was expecting with virgin oak to be uh, not happy, but it works. Sorry. Unfortunately, no vintage special releases of Ben Romach on the stand. Uh, I was a bit disappointed because I love their cast strength, Pitied and Cherried. Uh, I did a video about that, by the way, uh, in my channel earlier on, uh, just called Pit or Sherry, why choose? <laughs> Have a look. Um, okay, so this was my uh, almost last, but there's still two. 
Okay, Barry Brosson Rudd, uh, famous independent butler. Uh, the, um, this is the Pioneers range, collective, quite an expensive range. It's a shame, uh, I will dare to say. Uh, sorry, guys, but is it there or is it there? I'm going to give you the price after that. You're not going to like it. So they had some interesting releases, uh, but it was late in my journey at the show, like I said. I tried the, the three, I think three ones. Um, I, the first one I couldn't not try was the Madeira single cask. Uh, Westland, oh my, amazing, 53% ABV. This was super good. Oh, it doesn't focus, okay. Forget it, it's just to uh, illustrate. So yeah, there was very interesting, nine years old, also Westland, one of the oldest, uh, I mean distilled 2014, nice, a bit tight, a bit tannic, but yet working wor well. There was a cognac as well, you might have seen, from Jean-Luc Pasquet, uh, a bit too reduced, 40%, but nice, uh, but the best thing that I tried on the stand, which amazing, <laughs> amazing. Well, this Arden American single cast, Sherry Hawk's head. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cast rank 59.7. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Antonia and Jenny, if you watch this, but it's a single cast. We can compare a single cast with a small batch, right? It's at least three times better than the small batch reserve. It's more concentrated. It's more, uh, I mean, ABV also. And I will dare to say it's even better than the Jenny and Antonia selection for Salon du Gas, which was very nice. But this beats everything almost. Uh, I haven't tried single cast sherry official ones from the distillery, mind you. They don't come to France. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll see the one I tried, uh, the one they picked, uh, uh, Jenny and Antonia, but um, I don't see it yet in the catalog. So I don't know, uh, things are coming late here. But anyway, mind-blowing, fruity, very dense uh, raisins and uh, red fruit and uh, dark fruit and wow, 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 fantastic one. But, 175 euros for that. Are you ready to spend that? I forgot to mention in the list I tried also another uh, Swedish, I think, uh, whiskey, which was first time for me, the Agitator, uh, single cast sherry and pit, which was quite nice as well, no, sherry, uh, which was nice, but also super expensive. Last but not least, biggest surprise, uh, one of the biggest surprise of the show, stay tuned. Right. This Lowlands distillery I had never tried, also it was the first presence at a, a French whiskey show ever. Eden Mill distillery from the Lowlands, close to St. Andrew's Gulf. You can see the details here, founded in 2012, uh, stopped uh, distilling 2019 and now uh, except gin. And then uh, they have to completely uh, redo a new distillery. So there's limited uh, cask mastery series, uh, Madeira cask matured, fantastic. And the port was even better, 61.1. Uh, <sighs> Problem is 250, I have to double check in this list. Yeah, 250 euros for these whiskies. Uh. <sighs> come on, come on. Luscious, very well made, super gourmet, super balanced, beautiful whiskies, but way too expensive. Okay, that said, I had uh, a glimpse because they're not battled yet of uh, the new orange star, which is coming on soon, uh, 2024, th that's what I read, uh, wait, um, 
Uh, yeah, the coming, not necessarily this month, so maybe by the end of the year or uh, beginning of 24. More, much more reasonable, 69 euros each. Uh, there's a bourbon cask and a sherry cask. First field bourbon cask and for the other all zone peaks. Very nice, five to six years old, beautiful as well. Very interesting distillery. Uh, they had a gin I couldn't try. Uh, so I'm gonna follow them and really, uh, I think they're doing great, great stuff. We'll see how the new distillery goes, if they maintain the super high quality. Lowlands has Daft Mill and has Eden Mill uh, on top of the other distilleries everybody talks about. So, whoa, watch out for Lowlands as well. <laughs> okay, it's too long or very long or anyway, uh, it's the way I do it. I hope you, you found it interesting. If you have question about what I tried, I tried other things, but I couldn't speak of everything. Um, uh, let me know also if you try those whiskies. Uh, tell me your thoughts about it, uh, you think uh, you agree or not, and uh, about every brand I named and mentioned, or maybe others, uh, uh, because uh, I know I miss Cotswolds, I miss uh, Kilhoman Stand, uh, to name a few. Craigillaki had a new 23 years old cast strength crazy thing. Uh, also missed uh, Ben Nevis, Abelawa's new um, 18 years old double cast sherry, I'm really curious to try, Feta Cairn, uh, Glenfar class, um, <sighs> there's so many, I mean Elixir distillers I said already, sorry, uh, but uh, I went to Distan Dinstan stand what was going on? Only the core range? What? What's this? To Whiskey Life Paris, do you have only four things of the core range? Come on. So I didn't know. I, I'm not even stopping there. And by core range, there was no 18 years old, which I wanted to try. So forget about that. Uh, anyway, I was too happy with Eden Mill. Uh, last time I, I visited, uh, so looking forward to discover more. Thanks for watching. Please comment and like, and I'll, uh, I shouldn't have to say, but uh, and uh, yeah, see you soon for a shorter video for sure.